Well, hello everyone. If I'm going to be completely honest, I am super excited about today's episode because I have been looking forward to switching gears and getting back into the urban form building that is actually something that I consider to be within my wheelhouse. So I'm finally uh, glad that we are done all of the green space slots uh, in the downtown core and that we now can switch gears and actually get back into building more densely and adding on to the skyline for today. Now, for those of you just joining me and just discovering my little corner of the internet, my name is Michael, and I want to welcome you to Sovereign Gaming in Life Sins, the YouTube channel where I build world lots and share my thoughts on video games in the life simulation gaming space. Now, I'm not too sure if it is going to translate on camera or not, but I am actually a little under the weather, so if I am sounding just a little bit off here and there, it is actually just really due to that fact <laughs> so i do apologize if i sound a little off but anyways uh doing all of the green space lots and building them like i love how they all turned out i feel like it was a much needed uh neighborhood amenity a much needed downtown amenity to have because as opposed to just having like one big large park i was actually able to fit in several lots in there. So we had the open pit metro station, for example, which just lies directly north from uh, from where we're actually uh, building a lot right now. And um, and yeah, we also had the uh, fountain park as well. And then the amphitheater, who could forget that? And of course, the crumple bottom tea house where you can actually host wedding venues. And then there is the cat and dog parks. So yeah, very happy with the way that it all turned out. It was a very needed neighborhood amenity, in my opinion. Like, they weren't the most exciting builds just because, in my opinion, you can only do so much with parks. And, uh, you know, there's some fabulous uh, <laughs> park designs out there, don't get me wrong, but it's not something that's necessarily within my wheelhouse and not something that I really get excited for and what continues to drive excitement for me doing this whole SimCity project. So today, Today's episode is really something that I've just been looking forward to um, because like even though I could have just like switched it up and you know did some green space building versus some urban building I decided to just kind of get the green space uh, building a little bit over with in a certain sense but yeah today we are doing something completely different we are returning back to the tried and true urban forms that i am used to building and excited to build and always excited to build and um and yeah today we are actually going to be building an exclusive lounge and there are a couple of things that i want to actually do with this lot in particular to a add to the skyline and b just add in some additional functions to this lot because in my opinion, an exclusive lounge is something that is more like a private nightclub in a way. Like to me, that's how I understood it to be. And I really wanted to lean into my own understanding of what exclusive lounges are. And so in order for it to, in order for this lot to actually feel a lot more accessible to Sims from all walks of life, I decided to open up some different functions here and there uh, within the lot itself. And I'm very excited to kind of explore that vision with you and to share it with you guys because I think it really all came together in a way that I feel is uh, feels very natural to this lot and also adds in the urban uh, form and also adds the skyline in a way that I think is um, very impactful. Let's begin by talking about the skyline. So with the skyline, I really wanted to add something very luxurious feeling in terms of the different shells that we have. And sure, that can be a little hard to find with what we get from late night and what have you. But the tower that I really wanted to use was one of the tallest towers um, that you can actually get with the late night expansion pack. Now, I have done some testing with the lot sizes and some experimenting with the lot sizes. And if you've watched my Creator World series, you would have uh, been able to like hear about that experimentation process. But essentially, the conclusion that I found is that the 50 by 50 lots was the size that I wanted to use to uh, that would be able to fit all kinds of um, different shell buildings. And so 
the biggest shell building for a for an apartment tower i believe is the one that i actually ended up placing here however like there's still a lot of space to actually work with when uh when building out this 50 by 50 lot so i had a lot of space to fill there was a huge gap to fill and originally like before before I even started lot building, I was thinking that I would just be placing like five story or four story buildings. Actually, let me correct that. When I was building the uh, movie theater, that was originally the vision that I had in mind for these kind of lots in that they would be flanked by four level and five level story uh, buildings. Um, like urban style buildings, I suppose, denser buildings. <laughs> My terminology here when it comes to architecture isn't the best right now. Um, but yeah, that was the original vision. But when I had done the Midtown grocer, uh, grocery store build and I used some of the Roaring Heights, um, like those skyscraper objects, I quickly realized that if I wanted to add in some more um, some more dimension to the downtown skyline and uh, to the Sim City skyline that I would need to be using more of those objects. And so with the Roaring Heights skyscraper objects, firstly, the fact that they're recolorable is such a saving grace in this case. But the problem with them is that you have to be very careful because they compete with the visuals if you are placing um like playable areas just like directly below them like if you're one level below um if you're one level underneath one of these roaring heights skyscraper objects that object won't fade it'll just compete with your screen on whatever is presented on the level below there's also another little uh bit of a bug on here as well uh i don't think that you see it in this episode but you'll see it in the next episode and i'll explain the next episode some other time but um the bug is that sometimes it'll make the first floor or the um or the highest floor like disappear when it sits on top of the object which is really annoying but the way to work around that is actually just to place the object on top of it again like just do a little click in place but but yeah i'm kind of uh getting aside myself here but yeah that's the vision here is really just to kind of add a little more dimension to the skyline and with the tower that i used here this is also the same tower that i'm going to use in the next episode because i really want the tallest high-rise buildings to be within the downtown neighborhood and then it's gonna eventually like tapered down as we get further south within the downtown core and the Bridgeview neighborhood with the single family homes is really like what I'm working towards here and in order to do that and in order to make it look as natural as possible I realized like when doing the grocery store build that I would need to incorporate a lot more of these Roaring Heights um, skyscraper objects so I wanted to do that and I'm sure that you're seeing it on screen now, but I also wanted to um, activate the laneway as well. What I have been doing throughout the downtown builds, I have been giving like a little bit of a room, like just uh, six squares in width <laughs> for um, for an alleyway. And I've been keeping it very consistent. Even with the Midtown grocery store build, I still added in a little bit of an alleyway there. I just feel like it's realistic to have those in the cities. And uh, and yeah, that was part of the experimentation process back when I was in Creative World. But anyways, uh, part of my vision throughout SimCity is really to activate some of these alleyways. And um, and yeah, with this lot in particular, I really wanted to activate the alleyway and I also wanted to add in a little bit of an interact, uh, like a little bit of a hole in the wall cafe to the bottom level of the brick building just underneath the skyscraper object. And I've done some play testing, like I play test all of my lots and thankfully the little hole in the wall cafe that I placed underneath the, um, underneath the skyscraper uh, <laughs> building object from Roaring Heights doesn't really compete with the object in terms of the visuals. So I found it to be very playable in other words, is really what I'm trying to say. So I think that might just be the limit on that, although it's not something that I'm necessarily gonna try and, um, gonna try and do all the time. 
Like not every laneway is going to be activated first and foremost, but also I'm not going to be looking to place uh, playable spaces underneath these skyscraper objects from Roaring Heights. So yeah, that's a long-winded way of saying that this is one of the ways that I'm trying to make this slot become more activated and uh, more accessible by Sims from all walks of life so that it just kind of feels natural for everyone. Um, that also brings into account that there is indeed a food truck space that I have, uh, if I have not placed it already, but I will be placing. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, this lot is going to be mirrored on the other side of the block. And, um, and that'll be the next build as well. I'm just going to really change the colors on it a little bit and, uh, and just kind of keep it moving from there. But yeah. Very excited with how everything uh, just kind of turned out in terms of the form. I really love the idea of having the late night skyscraper uh, shell uh, get f uh, flanked wall to wall uh, with a building like this. I feel like even though you might uh, like this building, I would fully expect to be covered by high rises when I start building out midtown and I guess uptown as well but I also expect that you would see this building from certain angles too it's just really there to add more dimension to the skyline because the five level stories uh that you that are buildable from the game just really weren't going to cut it to add the dimension that I was really looking for. And to be fair, like I could have made this tower shorter, but I feel like because it's in that downtown core that I am completely justifying uh, justified in making it as tall as I can possibly make it. Again, the vision for the cafe, uh, just in the alleyway, or accessible from the alleyway, I should say, really comes from my own experience uh, in Sydney, Australia. Um, back in the day when I was traveling around and all that, I ended up in Sydney, Australia. And just on a whim, I just wanted to explore the downtown core because that's something that I do. I just go on self-guided walking tours, I suppose. And it was a plus 40 degree uh, Celsius day. And, uh, and I'm someone that fares very well in hot weather. So I was perfectly happy, let me tell you. But yeah, it was a very hot day in Sydney, Australia. And I was just kind of wandering uh, the downtown core. And I just so happened to have um, passed like an alleyway that was activated. And I went down it just to kind of see because I was just there to explore. I was being a tourist, right? And I came across this cafe just as a hole in a wall in an alleyway. It was tiny and it was quite literally a hole in the wall. And from there I ordered a flat white, which is said to have originated in Australia. Now for those of you that, um, that have been watching my videos for a while, I believe I have told this story before, but I have decided to actually use that cafe as inspiration for an activated alleyway experience for Sims alike. Sure, the act the alleyway itself could probably be built to be a little more pedestrian friendly. And you know, I'm just going to mention that here as a little note for myself, as that might be something I would I could consider um actually uh editing in an upcoming edit episode. And yes, like I've talked about an edit episode for the downtown core enough to commit to it. So <laughs> I'll put that on my list of uh things to just kind of experiment with but the w inspiration that I took from the cafe was just like my own um my own subjective experience in the cafe in Sydney Australia and I also wanted to give it more industrial twists here and there because I didn't necessarily feel like windows were right for this particular location so I decided to try and make it as industrial as I possibly could um <laughs> or as industrial as I felt was necessary. There's even like a little bit of an old school fireplace that I placed in the corner that I felt just kind of ties everything together in terms of like, you know, finding it more rustic, a little more industrial. And if there was like a vintage piece here and there within this cafe, it wouldn't feel out of place. The only issue with this cafe and uh, is that I couldn't place any kind of a stereo or a um, or one of those wall speakers because it's just going to play the same music. Uh, well, the wall speakers would play the same music, but what the stereos do is that they cancel out the wall speakers uh, being played on the rest of the lot, and that was something that I 
do you want to actually place in the lounge itself so unfortunately like with this cafe just due to the mechanics of the game there really are no uh there's no music that would play here but if i was going to uh place any kind of music in here it would likely be from the songwriter or indie um playlists that i would use for um <clears throat> for this particular lot excuse me there but yeah um outside of that i really love how the cafe turned out to be it does spawn another um it does spawn another npc to actually work the cafe and again i've done some play testing with this lot and the npc does spawn appropriately they close up shop when the lot closes up but yeah the idea here is really that this would be a cafe that would be open more likely during the day, but because of the game mechanics, it has to adopt the lot's uh, business hours, so it becomes something that's a little more uh, late at night kind of thing. And, you know, looking back, maybe this would have been better suited as a diner, but because I wanted to incorporate like a restaurant portion um, on the in the high rise lounge itself, I didn't want the game mechanics to get confused with each other for having two different restaurants and besides you can only set a menu um like once you set a or i don't know how that actually works for setting a menu but i just essentially didn't want them to compete with each other or to cause any more problems to the players than then already because this is a fairly complicated lot when you include more than one function to it and that was something that we saw with the old town uh retail corners that i incorporated a couple of functions with it and it does kind of complicate the lot just a little bit in terms of how npcs are behaving and how sims uh townies i suppose actually interact with the lot itself like i said there are going to be opportunities throughout the sim city urban builds to have more activated langways so if there is some sort of like a 50s diner like a late night 50s diner that i want to add in i will certainly take that into consideration going forward just because yeah um i feel like activated laneways and activated alleyways are really great like urban revitalization projects i've come across many of them even like throughout sydney australia but also um i've come across some of them in uh vancouver actually in vancouver canada uh where i used to live um long story with that i'm not going to get into it here even though this episode's like an hour long but yeah um and I really like that kind of urban revitalization. I feel like it just kind of adds like an additional function to a space that is either neglected or a space that can sometimes be dangerous in a way. It's a great way to um, to make a safe uh, to make an area safe again um, or safer, I should say. As soon as you like get something well lit up, it helps to it helps to uh, deter like any kind of criminal activities and all that. So. So yeah, I really like that idea for Sim City. That was something that I have planned this whole time going forward. And as more of those opportunities pop up, I will certainly look into it. But yeah, um, one of the things that I might edit here uh, in terms of activating the laneway is even though there is like a nice little shop front and everything, like maybe putting in some planters and maybe like doing a tiny bit of outdoor seating could go a long way in this. What this activated laneway also made me realize, actually with the alleyways for both this build and what the next build uh, did make me realize is just that the lots that they are directly beside being the business lot and also the science tower lot, those needed some of those, um, some of those pillars oh i completely forget what they're called but the shorter pillars from uh late night debug mode that you can get to place that kind of stops cars from going through yeah whatever those are called uh, like pylons maybe maybe they're like concrete pylons or something anyways i needed to place those in uh each of those lots um or sorry in yeah in the lots that are directly uh, north of this one so that included the movie theater and also the spa just because you know when I built out the alleyway here it didn't make sense for the concrete pylons not to exist in the other lots like it wouldn't make sense to have cars actually drive through like this is just a drive-in and a back out kind of an alleyway so yeah 
and I did that. <laughs> I did that off camera and I edited the uh, those other lots just to, you know, keep the same energy with the, <laughs> with the concrete pylon, so to speak. When it came to the streetscaping just outside of this lot, I really wanted to keep it simple and I didn't want any of the trees to really compete with the players in terms of like viewing what's actually inside the building and whatnot. And uh, and so yeah, I chose some shorter trees here and I used to like way back in the day, um, actually this is something that's kind of new to me, <laughs> I used to like never place smaller trees, I'd always be like a go big or go home kind of guy like when I was decorating my lots back in the day but I found these like really small I believe they're called apple trees in The Sims 3 and they just the form felt really nice for the look that I was going for I just wanted to bring like just a tiny touch of green into the lot where it made sense and then just kind of keep the area in front of the uh, brick mid-rise building a little more open and yeah I also matched uh, the brick mid-rise to the movie theater brick mid-rise from across the lot there so that's a whole thing as well but yeah I kept the streetscaping simple and I felt like it really went a long way and when I do the next build because the next build mirrors this one pretty much identically I uh, kept the streetscaping the same for that as well just because I felt like it fit although I didn't place the food truck in the next build so yeah moving into the meat and potatoes of this episode which is the high rise and the exclusive lounge itself I have actually decided to call the lounge champagnes and in my opinion there's nothing more luxurious than a champagne lounge and this isn't just any kind of a champagne lounge either it's one that has a restaurant to it if you didn't already guess and the colors that i the color scheme that i really wanted to use for the champagne lounge is the actual color of classic champagne itself being that golden yellow color um that you see and so that was something that I really wanted to uh, keep consistent throughout this build. And um, and yeah, the color was one of the most important things uh, to me to uh, build with for this lot. And, uh, and yeah, you'll see that throughout this lot here, the color of champagne is, it just permeates throughout. And I feel like it really gives it that luxury downtown feel and that's really what I'm trying to do for this build and the next build is to really add in some high-end luxury um, luxury places of interest and yeah this one was I feel like it really delivered at the end of this build that luxury feel that I was going for and I'm really thankful that I used the champagne color scheme that I did and I'll explain more about the VIP lounge in a bit but before that I want to also explain and probably over talk the form of the skyscraper so not every late night shell is built equal <laughs> <laughs> this is some experimenting that I did off camera like in between the last episode and this episode but something that I had to like get familiar with again is just the forms of the skyscrapers and actually like what space you really have to build on the levels on sitting on top and in this case I really discovered <laughs> I discovered that if you built to the edges on the first floor on the first of the higher levels that you build on top let me try that again because this is kind of hard to explain all right so when you get to the when you yeah when you get to the top floors and it skips through all those levels and you're able to build at the penthouse level on this particular shell you can build two floors so on the first floor if you extend the walls all the way out it's fine and all that but if you do that to the second floor that you have buildable then the walls actually peek through when you go into the roof view and it adds like the roof of the skyscraper um to it the uh, the crown so to speak like when it adds the crown structure i think that's actually what the name is called um 
yeah so when you get to the crown view and you zoom out like the walls actually peek through and that was something that i really didn't want a lot of uh just because i want this tower to actually look good from afar so what i had to do was i had to actually stagger the floors and this is something that's going to be an issue in the next build and you'll see why as well because i had to change the uh the layout and everything there but i'll I know I keep talking about the next build, but this build and the next build are literally the last pieces of the puzzle to come together in the downtown and they mirror each other identically, pretty much. But yeah, I had to stagger the second floor in, so I had to build it actually two floors shorter inside uh, on each of the sides. And although it is, um, it's space that I really would have loved to have played with, I also really valued the look of the tower like when you zoom out and even though it isn't perfect when you zoom out you can see like a tiny bit of the walls or a tiny bit of the uh, of the first uh, floor um, yeah those floor tiles when you zoom out like it isn't perfect but it was so much better than actually building out that second level to the full square footage that you could on the first so a little unfortunate there on how that had to happen but um but yeah that was something that i decided was more important than getting more square footage so yeah i hope that all was explained properly there but yeah i know for a fact that for other late night shells you can actually build more floors here and there like i think you can do two or three on some of them um and then they don't look as out of place or they don't um clash with the other uh with the rest of the late night shell when you go into that crown or top skyscraper view or roof view i suppose i'm really struggling with the terminology here so i do apologize if i'm just adding more confusion than uh, than anything another challenge that i really face when using the late night shells really comes with actually building the common rooms because they're like technically two floors tall they even feel taller if i'm going to be completely honest with you guys but the way that the late night shells work if you didn't already know is that when you place the shell firstly you can't like place it anywhere else like you have to use the undo button if you want to place it somewhere else so i had to be very careful about the placement of it but we've already passed that part of the episode at this point um but yeah the common room itself is very hard to actually work with with the late night shells and it's something that really annoys me and something that i find very challenging because when you place decorations on the walls you can't move them up or down you can't go to like the second floor and place it on top there because that just takes you directly to the higher levels that i had described before so yeah um i struggle a lot with common rooms in uh, late night and what I try to do is I try to like put more objects on the floor like fountains and stuff just so that it draws the eye towards the ground level things that are going on and I don't honestly think that I do a good job of this to be completely honest and like to be fair like this common room on the ground level is uh turned out okay i didn't mind it at all don't get me wrong but um it's a point of challenge that i know i have to continue to work with if i'm if i'm going to be adding in more late night shell skyscrapers and i definitely am so that kind of um those kind of uh visuals make it challenging just to decorate it and generally speaking because it really mesh messes with the vision that you have in this case like my vision was just that this is an exclusive lounge this is a very expensive building it's gonna have that uh lounge on the top floor and um and all of that and so this would likely be like a mixed use building that has a lot of fancier offices in it and stuff so i really wanted to um yeah maybe it even has like some sort of a condo portion to the building i am 
treading into fantasy land but the reason why that kind of helps to inform like the common rooms here is just because it helps me to determine like how many elevators I want to place in this case I place three um, when I normally typically place two and I also figure that because this is a taller building that it would likely warrant uh, to need to have like three elevators anyways but yeah um, I use that kind of um, I use that kind of set dressing in the back of my mind. <laughs> I use my imagination a little bit just to like inform like how this build should look and how this floor should feel. So when uh, customers take the, when Sims I should say, take the elevator to the top floor to actually enjoy champagnes, um, they are really greeted with a grand entry into the actual lounge and um and it feels like you're on a very you're very much on a luxurious floor because you're going to be getting some killer views and all of that speaking of which something that is going to kind of surprise you guys is that champagnes itself like the lounge area itself is actually going to be quite small in a couple of ways the first way that it's quite small is that i actually gave a lot more room for it to function more like a restaurant than anything else with the business as usual bistro uh since three store stuff um i mean say that five times fast <laughs> with that uh premium content set pack that set uh really adopts the business hours of the lot classification that it has placed on it and i've done experiments with it in the past and so it'll adopt the business hours of an exclusive lounge which is from like 2 p.m to 2 a.m if i remember correctly so um, the reason why that is important is uh, just for the functions itself, like it doesn't interfere with the actual function of an exclusive lounge. But to me, um, lounge spaces themselves aren't that large and I just felt like I couldn't justify placing like an entire floor for an exclusive lounge. <laughs> so I decided to, to really... Um, to really hone in on the fact that this is more of a restaurant and you'd likely make a lot more money as a restaurant. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to even say that because I bet you I could be very wrong. Um, you might actually make more money per serving if you're serving alcohol. But anyways, I decided that for the vision of champagnes that the restaurant would be the uh, would take up the larger part of the lot whereas the lounge part is more like a lounge to a fancy restaurant and um, it's kind of like known for the champagne bar that it has like I mentioned I've never like come across a place where an entire floor of a high-rise is dedicated just to like a lounge per se maybe like an entertainment center of some sort like with a stage and live performances etc etc but never to like an entire um to an entire lounge <laughs> so i decided to yeah really use a creative liberty here make the majority of the uh square footage inside uh be rem uh to be a restaurant and then what i did was i added an exclusive lounge on the second floor so yeah that was a really big part of the uh vision going ahead with champagnes truth be told it took me about two days of building this lot to actually get it finished either two or maybe even three days definitely two and a half though <laughs> and uh, you'll see the stairs leading up to the second floor exclusive like vip lounge part um change throughout this build here so um the stairs that i used from the then and back again mansion from the sims 3 store it's definitely not then and back again because that's that almost sounds like it comes from the Hobbit movie, but um, there's a mansion set that's sold on the Sims 3 store and it like they have two versions of it. One is where it's run down. The other is where it's not. And that's where the stairs come from and where the uh, stair object actually comes from. I don't end up actually using it, surprisingly, even though it does feel grand and all that. And really, I ended up going with a spiral staircase, which is... I guess a first in this series. I love spiral staircases, but I don't think I've ever really used them. And um, and yeah, that's uh, 
<clears throat> that was really used, excuse me, to save on space. But yeah, the um, the VIP lounge is really where I placed a bouncer because I do want the restaurant and the, I guess, the common lounge itself, the champagne's lounge itself to be accessible by Sims from all walks of life. Whereas the VIP lounge, I actually did set a celebrity requirement for it. So you need to have at least like three stars on it. Now I get it. Players don't always play with celebrities but there are mods out there that will help to control the celebrity population etc etc so um so yeah i actually wanted to give a proper place for those players that do play with celebrities and to give those celebrities like the one lounge to really hang out in <laughs> so so yeah that's kind of the idea here is um just to kind of give that private space and that upper lounge is actually going to be known as the rosé room and i do add in a little bit of a description into it into the um into the lot description itself and if you've been downloading some of my lots and the world itself which you still can and the links are all in the description box of this video but um i add in some descriptions here and there for these different lots and yeah that was really um that was really something that I have uh, done here is I've just like called it the rosé room and it takes like a completely different color scheme. If you haven't already guessed, it's going to be like a rose gold type of room. Um, that's really the color scheme that I was going for with that. And I feel like it turned out really pretty if I'm going to be honest with you and especially like when compared to the rest of the champagne's gold and yellow um, color scheme that it uses or color palette that it uses like it really complements and contradicts each other and juxtaposes each other like in a really nice way like to me it would make sense that you would have champagnes as an exclusive lounge and you come into this nice beautiful yellow and gold room but if you wanted like some really exclusive champagne or some you know some unique champagne that's like maybe a rosé blend and that's probably not a thing at all if i'm gonna be honest with you guys in fact that's probably more like sparkling wine territory which could be ironic in a way to <laughs> you know not take the celebrity so seriously but anyways i wanted the vip lounge to be uh to use like a rose gold color palette to it and i feel like i pull it off quite nicely and um and speaking of color palettes and all that i know i talked about it a little bit before and i don't want to over talk it too much but um the color palettes really needed to have like the lights changed as well and i changed them to a flame color as opposed to the white color that they have and i feel like it just helps to make the lounge a lot more cozier and, and romantic feeling and uh, that was something that I used in both like the VIP lounge and also in the uh, common lounge and the restaurant space as well. So yeah, you guys will probably like you would have seen me use the like you would have seen me change lights to flame colors all over the place and it can really dramatically change the actual shades of the colors that you use in a room when you change the lighting which is i know basic <laughs> but um it really helps to create like that certain romantic mood that i was going for in this lounge like you're not going to be caught dead yelling in this place or you wouldn't be caught dead making an ass out of yourself from drinking too much you have your like fun like this is more like not a place to like be getting drunk off your ass at you're certainly just like going to this lounge to just like have a good time to you know treat yourself to something that feels fancier and um and yeah you wouldn't be making a fool out of yourself is really what i'm trying to say in this lounge and this is really where all of the um the wall speakers kind of come into play because none of the music really suits this lot at all if i'm going to be completely honest and so i actually did end up keeping it as the classical uh music theme that it had to play in here and um that's like the default for the wall speakers and so i felt that the default was actually best suited to this lot i didn't feel like putting an indie here would have made sense same with pop music wouldn't have made sense electronic 
maybe i mean i have into the future so i could have put in digitunes that might be the one that i switched to later on but i felt like with the setup that everything is here like it would have been nice to have like some sort of a lo-fi or a you know um like a jazz even would have been all right here and r b is not suitable for this one so i kept it as classical i felt that that made sense and in a perfect world because music functions so weirdly in this game like I could have placed down a stereo, but when you play a stereo, it disables the wall speakers. And the same goes with instruments as well, because I was actually considering putting in like a nice grand, grand piano in a uh, on a stage or something here. And that could have been nice to have because in The Sims 2, like you could actually have or it's either The Sims 2 or The Sims 1. You actually could have pianists that play piano and they show up and they play the piano really nicely. Whereas in The Sims 3, like if you place a piano on a lot, you're gonna get a Sim that shows up to play chopsticks. <laughs> so, so yeah, there was that contention with the music that I just didn't feel like was appropriate for this. And I wanted to, um, I really wanted to keep the soundtrack as being more classical because I just felt that it fit a lot more appropriately. Like I had mentioned before, I had to build the upper floors in a certain way in order to, in order so that they didn't poke through when viewing the tower at its highest level. Um, and so that it wouldn't clash with the actual roof mesh that EA has. And so, Again, I, I'm still struggling with the terminology there, but when I build in like two or three sessions, it gives me a little time to uh, come back to the build with a fresh set of eyes. And in this case, like I had a really good idea in that I wanted to use some of the windows from Supernatural to really give it a grander look and feel. And so um, I had to actually drag the walls back a couple of spaces in order for the lower wall to match the upper walls because again, I really didn't want the crown design of the skyscraper building to be uh, like to have walls poking out of it because it just looks ugly or at least I didn't want it to poke out in an obvious way. So I had to actually drag the lower uh, walls back a couple of spaces, which then started a chain reaction in that, I, in that I had to actually change the stairs from a uh, from a grander staircase leading up to a spiral staircase. But I think that the look and the feel of it was something that was warranted for this kind of a space because, yeah, it just plainly looks better. It gives better views of the city and it made a lot more sense to have that open space above uh, the restaurant tables. And um, and yeah, I just love that it kind of gives this really grand look to the uh, to like the government campus and to the ocean um, that one would expect in an exclusive lounge in a prime real estate place. <laughs> a, pl a prime piece of real estate is really what I meant to say. My goodness. <laughs> I told you guys I wasn't feeling well when uh, doing this, which is why I've been like clearing my throat and coughing throughout this whole uh, recording. So I do apologize for all of that. But, um, but I hope I was, <laughs> but it seems like I'm also not explaining things thoroughly either. Anyways, I love how um, I love how it turned out. I felt I feel like the change was very necessary, and even though it kind of um, kiboshes some of the uh, common lounges uh, square footage a little bit, I felt like the spiral stair uh, spiral staircase again with the words was a very good compromise for it. And um, and yeah, I really like how it all turned out in terms of that. And uh, and yeah, there is one thing I might change. I might change the walls, especially on the upper levels, just because it kind of feels a little off there. So I might actually do that. I'm also not too crazy about the walls uh, surrounding it as well. I might actually just turn it all into that champagne yellow and have it more muted because the white really pops out so i might do a little bit of experimenting that might be a part of the editing episode that i actually 
uh, end up filming here. So, um, so yeah, you guys can look forward to that episode some other time. But if you do have any other changes that you would like to see or any other suggestions, feel free to drop that comment in the comment section. I do not mind at all, and I do read the comment section quite thoroughly. So, feel free to drop those comments below. But yeah, back to the build here. When doing the design of the exclusive Rosé Lounge, like the Celebrity Rosé Lounge, I really wanted it to look over the restaurant, but I also didn't want the people in the restaurant to look up into the, um, into the Rosé Lounge. So it was a very complicated um, problem to try to tackle, but I feel like the solution that I found actually turned out really beautiful, which was just adding in um the gates and then putting some curtains over it with move objects on and then using the rosé color palette to just kind of denote the two different levels there being the champagne level and then the rosé lounge so i feel like the solution that i ended up using was at the end of the day very graceful and actually something very aesthetically pleasing i also wanted to add some more amenities into the rosé lounge itself of course in the champagne lounge part um you have the mixologist there, you can talk and all that. Like again, it's supposed to be that casual lounge that you're not making a fool out of yourself at. <laughs> and the focus is really on the food anyways. But in the Rosé Lounge, I really wanted to give some more amenities to it. So I dropped in that oxygen bar that came with Late Night, which I don't feel like I use enough um, in my lounge build. So I made sure to consciously pick that. And then of course I added in a poker table as well. Since I am not planning on having a casino build in SimCity in the traditional sense, um, I did want to include like little casino uh, objects here and there where I felt it made sense. This part of the lounge I felt made sense because it's more private. You can go up there and enjoy a game of poker if you wanted to. And uh, and yeah, you can just kind of keep it moving from there. Like I've used the, um, the Lucky Palms casino objects also in the uh, jazz club that I built uh, way back in the Old Town builds. And I used that more extensively as it was more like, um, or like during the prohibition days, like it had a little more of a historical impact to it where people would be gambling in those floors. But that was a completely different build and you can check out that episode if you'd like yourself. Um, but here I just wanted it to be more like a private table that you would visit this lounge for. And same with the oxygen bar. And I extended the um, the actual mixology parts of this lounge, of the Rosé Lounge itself, uh, just because the focus there is really more on the drinking and the elixirs that you would consume and all of that. So, it's a place for your celebrity sins is really, um, what I'm getting at here and what I've already mentioned, but those celebrity sims can also enjoy some vices in private as well, such as, I guess, using the oxygen bar, but also drinking and uh, playing a little bit of poker as well. So that was something that I really wanted to achieve and I feel like I really did. And with the color palette um, that I used for both the champagne level and with the, um, and with the rosé lounge, it really... I really think that I did a really great job with building out champagnes and even though like I would probably change a few things here and there like particularly the walls in the restaurant and in the lounge I do feel like it it all came together in a really nice way so and when the lighting comes online and all that you'll really see how like using that those flame colored lights really helps to make it feel more romantic and more uh, luxurious. So really happy with how this all turned out. The same thing goes with the rosé room as well. I also switched the lights so that they are um, flame colored. <laughs> Again, I don't feel like I'm using the proper terminology for nearly anything this episode. So I changed the light colors to flame because even though um, I particularly use like a rosé color palette with hex codes and everything. It looks really pink in the video, but when I switched the lights over to be that flame color, it actually looks like it's proper rose gold color palette. So 
yeah really happy with the way that it all turned out it it emulated everything that i needed it to emulate i'm very happy with it <laughs> and i keep saying it but i really am um yeah so let's talk a little bit about the next build that we have going on so the next build that i will be doing after this is going to be the last build for the downtown neighborhood um, after that we really move into the midtown neighborhood but i've got another build in between that i am just going to surprise you guys with but um but yeah the next build that i will be um that I will be doing and I've talked about it extensively throughout this episode but it is going to be a mirrored copy of this lot here really and that mirror copy involves like the same high-rise building because I do want the same high-rise building to bulk up the skyline but because they're so far separated they actually look good and look like they belong etc etc and I even use like the same uh, brick mid-rise although I changed the color on the brick mid-rise there but I just wanted to like give you guys uh, that um, in this episode here because it might look very similar to each other but it is going to be absolutely completely different on the inside and I've got some really cool surprises with that one because I ran into some problems just with the form of the um, just with the form of the shell from late night just kind of acting against me but it really led into a really cool solution that I think that you guys are going to love and yeah the next build that I'm going to do is I am going to be doing a penthouse build and it'll be one of I think one of two penthouses within the downtown region I didn't want to like overdo it with penthouses um I want some I want a good balance of different housing options within the downtown core itself and um and when we get to like midtown and specifically uptown there's going to be even more housing uh that takes precedence there but with the downtown and midtown there's a lot more community lots because i have to fit in all of those lounges and bars and stuff so um with the next build it's going to be like a luxurious penthouse build turns out phenomenal um <laughs> just gotta say that like if you're really looking for designer luxury living in a high-rise building this next penthouse build is going to absolutely knock your socks off i think anyways i love what i did with it there were so many happy accidents that happened along the way with it that i was just like this is this kind of served uh so so yeah you have that build to look forward to it's a great one to end off the downtown neighborhood builds and a great one to just like upload uh whenever i get a chance to it but like i said like there is going to be an edit episode that is in the pipeline and then i've got like another ep uh, episode as well that might also be in the pipeline as well but there might be certain delays to that upcoming episode because like i mentioned a couple of episodes back i am kind of considering like taking a little bit of a break from youtube but i'll make a whole video and channel announcement when that time comes uh when i feel that that break is necessary so so yeah that is all i will tease about that one there we are just gonna put the finishing touches on the champagne's lounge here I, again i love how it turned out i'm finally adding in something luxurious in a prime real estate location and it feels really good uh, to do something outside of just building a shell building in the downtown core and I feel like it helps to balance it along with the green space amenities that we just finished adding so yeah really happy with how the downtown is shaping up to be and I think that I think that I've done a great job here. I'm so glad that I set myself up for success from the Create a World series up until now. Uh, and it's all like really starting to come together here. Anyways, I'm done patting myself on the back. I don't normally do that, but this one really, this one served as well, if I'm going to be honest. But yeah, the next build absolutely just... You know it's chef's kiss it was great one of my best builds i think i've ever done if i'm gonna be absolutely honest with you guys but anyways we're coming to the end of the episode here and i just want to take a moment here to just say thank you so much for watching and if you've enjoyed this episode and 
If you've enjoyed this series and if you'd like to keep up, then feel free to like this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Again, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions, drop those suggestions in the suggestions box below. Um, in the suggestions section, I should say, below. I read all of my comments and all of that, so I'm more than happy to take a look at that. And there's an editing episode in the pipeline at some time in the future. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.